All right, everybody. Hi, this is Lori Delkordecki. And so tonight's training, I always call these Lori's lessons. I was trying to always think of some cool little cliche thing that call my little trainings. But anyway, um, my training tonight is going to be on posture and how you show up and how you are perceived. And so one of the things is you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, fake it till you make it. And I never liked that saying because to me, that just sounds incongruent, right? It sounds like you're not being real. And so I never liked that, but I did like where somebody else I had heard train on one time act as if the way you want to be perceived and the way that you want to have people look at you, but also the way you want to act. Like, for example, if somebody asks you a question or if somebody comes up to you, if you're making, just say, $50 a month versus if you're making $5,000 a month versus if you're making $25,000 a month, you're probably going to ask answer things differently, and you're probably going to act a little bit differently, right? So you're going to show up a little bit differently, maybe a little bit more confident, maybe a little bit more, um, you're going to answer more in depth. Maybe you're going to be just the, honestly, the biggest thing is confidence. And so, and there's a huge difference between confidence and ego, right? You can be confident, with people and answer things um, with confidence and with, you know, that assuredness versus being basically egotistical and, oh, I'm a miss know it all and, you know, well, I'm better than you type mentality, right? Because none of us are better than anyone else. Like the only reason I'm making more money than someone else in the company, because I've put the patch on more people. I've demoed more people. That's it. I've talked to more people, right? That's the only reason. So some people have bigger lists than other people. Some people might have a bigger following than other people. It doesn't really matter, right? Some people might be in the industry for 30 years versus three okay. months. All of those things, none of that matters. The biggest thing is that one person has talked to more people than other people. And that's how that's how you get more signups, right? So it's the numbers game. You just go and talk to more people. But about the posture, the, the actual definition is the belief in what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval. So you should believe in what you have, right? Like if you don't believe in the patches, you shouldn't be here, <laughs> right? So believe in what you have. And when you fully believe in it, then you also fully believe that someone should use it, right? And if you fully believe in it, then you should not be afraid to tell anybody about it, right? So those people that are like on your chicken list or say you don't want to talk to a certain friend or family member or whatever, if you truly believe that it will help them, then why would you hold it from them, right? Why would you hold that information from them? Like for me, when I joined, I joined because I had major, major bad sciatic pain. I had been in bed for a month crying. My husband had to help walk me to the bathroom. And so if Steve didn't share it with me, and I found out later that he knew about it and didn't share it with me, I'd be mad, <laughs> right? And so the same thing, if you if you fully believe that it will help someone, then you want to share it with them. And so that belief in what you have, regardless of the external acceptance or approval, right? Because you don't require approval or acceptance from any family members, from any of your friends, from any of your neighbors, from any of your followers, right? Any of that stuff. You don't require acceptance from any of those people. You um, you just share it with them 
because you believe in it. And the same thing, you might not, your, your job isn't to sign them up. Your job isn't to get them to buy this biggest package, right? If they do that, that's great. We would love that. But that's not your job. Your job is to simply share it with them, right? And see if they like it or if they don't. If they if they don't like it, oops, sorry, somebody's trying to get in and I didn't click, I clicked off the screen. Um, if, if somebody doesn't like it, then that's okay. That's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about it, but your job is to share it with them. And the more you share it, the more you're going to get that confidence with people. And, you know, like I remember when, um, when we were in Dallas and I was riding with someone in the, one of the Ubers and I demoed the guy and the person that was riding with me was like, how do you do that? How do you just drum up the conversation with people and talk to them and get them to let you patch them? And I was like, well, you know, you were right here. You heard, heard me. I just made normal conversation. But he ended up mentioning that he had been out of a job for a couple months. So he's been doing Uber full time and he doesn't really want to do it full time. And it's making OK money. It's helping to pay the bills, but he has to drive a lot in order to do that. Right. So those things just tell you different patterns. And then he said, you know, since he's in the car so much, his back was hurting. And so there's two things. I can help them with the pain and I can help them with the income, right? So you just find the things in the normal conversation, how you can help them and how you can solve their issue or their problem. And, you know, whether you have the approval from people or not, it's not, never think of it like it's a waste of time or also never try to convince someone. Like, you don't want to convince someone of their opinions of network marketing. I have a super good friend of mine. She's probably one of my closest friends, but yes, she completely does not believe in this industry, right? And I've been in this industry over 30 years and I've made a good income from it. I've supported my family in it and she doesn't believe in it. That's okay. I'm not going to change her opinion. Now, I did give her some patches. She did try it. She even said it helped her some, but she's not interested in it. She doesn't really believe in the network marketing thing, even though we've talked about it several times, just in normal discussions. And that's okay, right? You don't have to be defensive. You don't have to change their minds. You just share with them and you show them. She has seen me on the stages. She's seen my checks, um, but I'm not going to convince her, right? So it's okay, but I'm going to talk to the next person, right? Because I know, because I've seen my checks and I cash my checks and I know it works and I know the product works. It helped me get my life back. It helped me to get out of bed so I could start watching my grandbaby again, right? It um, has helped me with so many things. My husband's been helped with his, with his blood pressure and um, being on blood thinners. And so there's so many different things that we can be convinced about, but we don't have to convince someone else. It's our story. And we just have that responsibility to share our story and to share our product or service or whatever, whether it's the product or whether you're sharing it for the financial side, either way, you can share it. And that's your, that's, your job and then their job is to decide and so there's always like two biggest things that are a waste of time that i see in people all the time is one they beat themselves up because they're not good enough they're not sharing it with enough people they you know whatever the excuse you know i'm not confident enough i don't see how you talk to people the more you talk to people the better you're going to get at it but don't beat yourself up. Everybody started somewhere. 30 something years ago, I didn't talk to people the way I talk to people now, right? 
even when I joined this company at the beginning, I didn't have the confidence that I did the day I joined versus what I do now, right? Because I know a lot more. I've researched a lot more. I've learned a lot more. But still, at the beginning, all I did was shared my story and gave them my link. Literally, that's it. Share my story, give them my link. I tell other people why I pulled out my credit card. And that's what you want to do is literally just tell other people why you pulled out your credit card. And if you find that that as you share it, like a lot of people say that they don't want to share it on their social media. I know for me, since I watch my grandbaby four days a week now, most of my sharing is on social media. Now, I still, when I go out and about, I still find ways to bring it up. Just like I said about the Uber guy. I did it the other day um, in line at the post office also. So it's, I share it and I work it while I'm doing the normal stuff that I normally do in my life. But, you know, if, if somebody tells you, you know, that they're like hating on you or they tell you it doesn't work or whatever somebody might tell you, don't worry about it. Just say, you know, okay, that's cool. If you don't like it, you don't have to join me. Totally cool. And you still just go on and you share it with other people. You don't want to try to convince somebody that network marketing is great. You don't want to try to convince somebody that our patches are great. You don't want to try to convince somebody that the comp plan is great or they can make lots of money, right? All those things are true and all those things are valid, but you don't want to convince the people. You just want to work and you want to share it with people as you go about your life or on purpose going out or on purpose sharing it on social media, however you choose to do it. And don't beat yourself up over the different things. Don't beat yourself up because you don't want to share on social media like I do. Don't beat yourself up because you can't ride in an Uber and talk to the guy like I did, right? Any of those things, don't beat yourself up. Just do what's comfortable for you. Now, you still can push yourself out of that comfort zone a little bit, right? Like, I'm not going to do something that I'm completely uncomfortable with. But there's lots of things that we do in our life that mm, maybe we're not ready to do yet. But we still push ourselves a little bit to do it, right? Because there's some things that you can do in your life that you can push yourself forward and guess what? You did it and wow, you didn't die. Yay, right? So think about that and think, wow, so then you could do it again. Not like, just for example, say like these trainings or even going live on social media. If you look at my lives from like 10, 15 years ago, or any of even my recorded trainings from 10, 15 years ago. You would look at them and go, oh my goodness, what was wrong with her? <laughs> I can't believe she did it, right? It didn't go back and delete this, right? So if you totally hate it, you can always delete it. That's another thing about social media. You can go back and delete it, but I encourage you not to. I encourage you to leave it because yes, you could laugh about it 20 years down the road. But the thing is, the biggest thing is you go out there and you do it. And even if you do it messed up, you still do it. Each time when you do it, you're going to get more confident. You're going to get better. And your lives or your recordings are going to look better. And they don't have to be perfect. And the thing is, the people out there that are watching you, if you're so perfect and so polished and everything looks great all the time, people are going to say, I could never be like her. I'm not good enough. You know, oh, I don't have a pretty enough house. I don't have a pretty enough shirt. I don't have a pretty enough whatever, right? Somebody is going to feel that where if you go out there and you're raw and real and it's the way it is. Like if you look at some of my old ones now, all my kids are older and I only have a cat. <laughs> I don't have a dog and he's locked out of my office right now. But you would see 
a cat climb up on the back of my chair. You would see dogs fighting in the background. You would see a kid walking through the back of my house, the way, the way my other house was set up. And I didn't have a dedicated office. My office was in the corner of my living room. So I still did it. I still pushed forward. I still went ahead and did it because people saw that was the raw and real. Now I have a dedicated office, but guess what? Four days a week, I'm with my grandson. So if you do a Zoom with me, or even if I do do a live, I usually try to do the lives when I'm here. So it's not as interruptive, but if I feel like I have something to say, I'll go ahead and say it. But like, if you get on a Zoom with me during the day on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you're probably going to see my grandson climbing up on my lap, or you're going to hear me yell at him no, or, you know, see a ball get thrown across the room or see a dog because she has two little dog chihuahuas that jump all over my lap all the time. Right. The thing is, it's okay. People can see it because they see then it's the raw and real. And then they think, wow, I can do this too. If she can do it with all that that's going on in her place and her life, then I can do it too. And so that's why you don't want to wait till everything is perfect. Oh, till I lose enough weight. I still want to lose weight till I, you know, my hair is perfect till my makeup's perfect till my, I have the pretty office, whatever it is, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do it because that's it. Like I said, everybody, if they see the raw and real of you, then they're, you're going to attract those people more and people are going to want to work with you more. If it's all seems all fake, or if, you know, like if I go out and do a photo shoot, like when I did my book and I did a photo shoot, right? That was all perfected and everything looked better and took the time, made sure, you know, makeup was done, hair was done, everything was nice, background was good, all that stuff. If you're doing a photo shoot for something that's huge like that, like for a book or for an article or whatever, then yeah, make it all perfect. But what people see all the time from you you want them to see the raw and real because that is what is going to attract more people to you. So I hope that helped. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop and you'll have a great